So this is a boxing video. Um, just want to discuss a few up and coming fights, uh, the state of the game, and uh, a few other things. Um, okay, so there are two major fights coming up. That is Klitschko versus Fury and Canelo versus Koto. Um, unfortunately, I don't have pay per view, so it's difficult for me to watch fights. And what happens is a bit frustrating, but uh, the financial situation won't be good in mind. Um, I was actually in Dusseldorf recently, um, where the big Klitschko Fury fight's going to happen. Uh, there was nothing in the city to give that away, no posters or anything like that. But um, a lot of the big Klitschko fights are in Germany, although he's obviously Ukrainian. Germany's sort of a second home for him. And they're big fights, so you should get upwards of 50,000 people. Um, I'm a huge Klitschko fan. I, I think he's a great heavyweight, one of the greatest heavyweights ever. Um, I like his... Um, I like his mannerism as a as a person. Uh, some people sort of think that's boring in it and not irrelevant, but I disagree. I think when you're heavyweight champion of the world, um, and yes, I know there's different uh, sanctioning bodies, but Klitschko is pretty much the dominant heavyweight it has been for the last decade. Um, I think you do have to be a good role model, and you could not think of a better role model than Vladimir Klitschko. He's um, He's very confident, but he's not arrogant. He is respectful. He never trash talks. Um, well, all of this stuff is kind of stating the obvious, but um, he reminds me a bit of Matt Schmeling in some ways. I sort of uh, can't really explain why, but I associate the two together. Um, anyway, Fury, young fighter, uh, very able, very powerful, um, and on beam. But that's always a danger, I think. With guys who are unbeaten, there's that sort of unswavering confidence, which is almost dangerous, because very, very few fighters retire on the field. There's only been a small handful. Uh, Marciano, of course, Calzaghi, of course. Um, only a very small number of others, Sven Otka. Um, so even great fighters have losses. That's something that Tyson Fury needs to realise. He also isn't really learning from previous Klitschko opponents. Now, Fury makes the point that he's a different sort of fighter. And I would concede that he's more than just a regular contender. I think that Tyson Fury will give Klitschko a real fight, especially given that Klitschko is getting older now. And, you know, you have a young, strong, powerful um, fighter who unusually is taller than Klitschko. So I do think this will go the distance. Um, I still think Klitschko will win. And I'm not just saying that because he's the favourite. I think that Klitschko simply outsmarts every man he faces. Um, but I might be wrong. Obviously, being British, it would be great to see another British world heavyweight type, uh, title holder You know, since, um, since Lennox Lewis. So that would be great. If Fury can pull this off, he will definitely be in contention for being one of the greatest. British heavyweights ever. I mean, the man who beat the man, that will really be an accolade to be proud of. Um, I know we shouldn't assume that just because a uh, fighter is cocky, that means he's going to lose. Muhammad Ali was cocky, and he, he basically backed up his uh, cockiness. Now, I'm not saying that Tyson Fury is Muhammad Ali. Obviously, he's not, but I think he is a very skilled um, athlete. And um, I think it'll be a good fight. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I think he will be a lot more formidable than David Hay or Derek Chisora. Uh, Chisora especially was a very able contender. But I think Fury is probably the best heavyweight Britain has seen, possibly since Lennox Lewis. And I don't say that lightly. Um, so it will be an interesting fight. Um, I won't be able to watch it on the date. There's been postponement. Postponements, obviously, because I'll just have to watch it on YouTube months later, which is unfortunately always what happens. If Fury can beat Klitschko, it will be one of the biggest upsets, I think, for a very long time, simply because Klitschko has had such a long period of unbeaten streaks. People say he fights bums and tomato cans, which are terms I don't like anyway, but if you look at some of the opponents, you know, a man like Alexander Povetkin is not, is not a tomato can. 
Um, is he an all-time great? No. But nor is he, you know, you can't dismiss guys like Alexander Povetkin, whom Klitschko dominated. The same with Kubrat Kulev. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, I'll probably make another video uh, after that fight. So I'm kind of, uh, as a Klitschko fan, I want Klitschko to win, but at the same time, part of me kind of wants Fury to win because of uh, patriotic side. I'd like to see a British heavyweight champion. Although I would like to see, if Fury does win, I'd like to see him eat a little bit of humble pie. There's nothing wrong with um, being confident, but too much... You know, the thing is, I don't think Fury's a, a bad guy. I don't think he's a genuinely on unpleasant person. I think a lot of it's front. A lot of young fighters do this to give themselves confidence. I don't think he's a bad person. Uh, you know, I don't think he's a mindless thug or something like that. Um, and I do think a lot of it is bravado. But the thing is, he is unbeaten, so you know, he backs it up as well. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, next big fight, uh, Canelo Cotto. And this is being called a super fight. Now, the problem is every fight that's being billed a super fight is going to be treated with a question mark ever since the backlash from Mayweather Pacquiao. Uh, I don't really need to go over what happened there. You know, the whole world waited for that. Even people not interested in boxing, everyone was talking about it. And it turned out to be a pretty big letdown. I still contend that the fight itself wasn't that bad, not as bad as people make it out to be. Um, but, but the problem is there you had two fighters with very different styles going together, both great fighters in their own right. But when you have fighters with different styles, you're not going to get a fan friendly fight. I think the sort of fight that fans go for is when you have two aggressive um, guys who go in there like bulls and just go at it. With Pacquiao Mayweather, you have um, the aggressive fighter Pacquiao going against the defensive wizard. Uh, Mayweather and you get the sort of fight that that produced so with I have to admit um, and this is not intended as any disrespect but I haven't really followed Miguel Cotto's career I know he's um, world ranked highly respected um, you know I think he, he's definitely an all um, he's definitely a hall of famer but admittedly I, I haven't followed his career very much I haven't seen many of his fights so I can't really comment in detail um, I've seen a lot more of Canelo's fights. Um, there's a whole Puerto Rico, Mexico thing in there, so that's going to obviously bring a lot of excitement. Um, you know, that'll go back to the days of Chavez and uh, guys like that. I do think it'll be, uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't a pretty exciting fight and a pretty action packed fight. Um, if I had to put a prediction on who would win, I would say Canelo. But it'll be very close. Um, the reason I'm saying that is, A, I've seen more Canelo fights. Um, but, you know, I would never underestimate Koto. I guess I'm slightly biased towards Canelo simply because I've seen more of his fights. And honestly, that's the only reason. You know, if someone has a compelling argument for Koto, I'd absolutely listen to that argument. Um, either way, it's going to be interesting. If Canelo wins... I think he will have a very good claim to be the next, you know, superstar of boxing to succeed Mayweather. People say Golovkin. Um, the thing about Golovkin, he's obviously a, a force of nature. He's a very formidable fighter, but he's in his 30s. He won't be around for that long. And I, I just see a Mexican fighter making that break in that mold more than a Kazakh fighter. With what I want to sound sort of prejudiced, but the reality is, in the world of boxing, it is very much um, biased towards American and Latino fighters in the sense that it's a lot easier to see someone like Canelo become a superstar than Golovkin. Because Golovkin's he's a nice guy, he's he's respectable, he's a very, very formidable fighter, but I just can't see him filling Mayweather's shoes in terms of the superstar appeal. Um, somehow I just see Canelo doing that more. Um, and that's no slight on Golovkin's ability. It's just the reality of the politics of boxing. Um, so I think if Canelo wins this one, then he will almost certainly be the next 
big superstar. I know Furman's making a pitch for that, but I think, well, Canelo's had more experience of Furman. Uh, I'd love to see a Canelo Furman fight. That would be something. Um, but Furman's one of those other guys that definitely, he's a character. He stands out, very formidable fighter. Um, you know, Furman's one of those guys that I'm watching closely. Uh, here in Britain, Amir Khan is still young. He's still got, I think he's still got a lot of potential. Um, quick word about Mayweather Pacquiao. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time watching the video or anything like that, but I've seen that Pacquiao is calling for a rematch. Um, I'm a huge Pacquiao fan, but I think he's um, not being realistic with that. It simply isn't going to happen because Mayweather would gain absolutely nothing from it. Um, the risk would be entirely Mayweather's risk. Um, let's say they did have a rematch and Mayweather lost. That would make absolutely no sense to go 49 and then just lose a fight. It wouldn't make any sense from Mayweather's perspective. I mean, what is in it for him? Even if, um, you know, people say he's motivated by money, even if he got 75% of the purse, Pacquiao got 15%, but sorry, 25%. I still don't think Mayweather would go for it because he knows it's too much of a gamble. If I was Mayweather, I wouldn't go for it. Um, you know, people will say he's running and all the rest of it. Um, I mean, I, I said at the time that, you know, Pacquiao fans, and I included myself in this, were being a bit naive to kind of expect Mayweather to go in there and suddenly change his style. Why would he? If he has a style that works, if that defensive style wins fights, he's not really going to care if people are bad mouthing him on the computer screen, you know he's a multi-millionaire. He's famous. He's undefeated. He he would lose. He's got so much to risk by taking a rematch with Pacquiao. It just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, I think on this occasion Mayweather means it when he says he's retired. He's got no reason to fight anyone else. You know he's parred with Marciano. What reason has he? There may well be that push to get. 50-0, and 0, but I think if he does that he would take a much less formidable opponent than Manny Pacquiao, especially given that Pacquiao was fighting with an injured um, arm. When you say Pacquiao was fighting with full strength, you know, that's a real risk for Mayweather. Why would he do it? So, I don't know whether Pacquiao's doing this because he wants some sort of redemption from the fact that it's a loss. You know, you can argue about the details, but a loss is a loss or whether he's doing it because his fans are pressuring him to do it. I don't I don't really know why Pacquiao's pushing this. Um and you know, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Pacquiao fan, I've a huge amount of respect for him, but I think he he must know himself deep down that it's not gonna happen. Um okay, uh finally bit of an overall analysis of the state of boxing. Um with the rise of MMA over the last 10, 15 years, the convention has been the boxing in, is in decline. I really don't know about this. I think it comes from the fact that traditionally the heavyweight division has always sort of been the golden division. Uh, the 70s, for example, and the 1990s were golden years for the heavyweight division. I don't actually believe that the heavyweight division has declined. I think it's simply a bit less interesting because it's been tom dominated totally by two brothers. Uh, and now just one of the brothers. Um, so as much as I'm a critical fan, I do agree that it's slightly less interesting than, say, the 70s or the 90s. But you have guys like Deontay Wilder um, who are up and coming. Um, there's a few British prospects. Dillian White could be someone to watch, Anthony Joshua. Um, I don't think the heavyweight division is in, necessarily in decline. I think it's simply less interesting. Because when it's dominated by one person, I mean, it must have been a bit like this in the 1930s when Joe Lewis dominated. And, you know, look what happened. It it never went away. Um, so I think it's something similar to that. I mentioned earlier, I, I see Klitschko as a bit like Max Schmeling. I see some similarities with Joe Lewis as well. I'm not talking about fighting style. I'm talking simply about the dominance factor. Um, boxing isn't going to decline. This is a thing. Boxing has been around well, since ancient Greece, but modern boxing has been around since 1681. 1681, that was the first recorded fight uh, in the modern sense. 1681, it's not going to go anywhere. It will have down periods, but it isn't going to go anywhere. I do, and another thing, I think 
where there's criticism of the sport, it's unfair to attack fighters who, in my opinion, are doing what they have to do. If there's criticism, it should be leveled at the governing body. So fighters have no say in that. So it's unfair to say, oh, you're less of a champion because there's five other champions or whatever. Um, I think there's more pressure on fighters today because in the old days, there were fewer governing bodies. So, okay, uh, you could argue that they had to... Well, I would say it's harder today because if you get a championship, it isn't really respected because there's other... You know, there's something... At the moment, there's something like 56 different title holders, including all the divisions. Some of them are hardly even household names. So, you know, I, I think it's unfair to blame the fighters for that. They've done what they've had to do. They've won fights. They, they've done everything they've had to do. They can't fight guys who aren't there if they're at the top of their division. So if there's blame to be leveled, it should be leveled at the governing bodies. You know, I think there really needs to be a consensus in boxing. They, they need to have some agreement and there needs to be some sort of mergers between the big governing bodies. Um, otherwise, MMA is going to surpass this sport and I don't really want to see that happen. Um, you know, I'm not saying this to disrespect MMA fighters. They, you know, they've got guts to do what they do. They're they're fighters, you know. But um, I think that MMA simply hasn't been around as long as boxing. It doesn't have the cultural weight of boxing. It doesn't have the history of boxing. You simply can't compare the two in terms of the, for example, the cultural impact boxing has had has been absolutely massive. Um, I don't think that MMA is going to surpass boxing. It may equal it. It may, you know, MMA is going to be around. That's obvious. And then the world of boxing needs to accept that. But, you know, uh, one point I'd like to make, um, there was a controversial thing happened recently, and that was that Ring magazine announced that they're going to put Ronda Rousey on their January cover. I, like many Ring readers, take issue with this. And it's not because she is a woman, it is because she's not a boxer. It's a boxing magazine. They may as well stick a wrestler on there. Um, as for Ronda Rousey, well, she's a formidable fighter from what I've seen. Uh, I'm not particularly an MMA fan. Um, but she comes across as pretty arrogant. She, I've seen her glow over opponents in this. I don't have much time for her attitude. Um, I think she's, I don't think she's a good role model. And, you know, she's kind of being trumped up as a feminist icon. Um, I don't have much time for that, and I don't have much time for her. I'm not taking away her achievements. She's a very formidable athlete, but I don't think she's a good role model. I think she's arrogant. I think she's pretty obnoxious. And she's come out with some pretty sexist statements against men as well. Um, so, yeah, I've not much time for her. And I think Ring is making a big mistake with this. If they want to you know, showcase women's boxing, put Cecilia Breckers on the cover. She's the number one ranked woman boxer in the world. Um, she has been for a long time, so it seems surely it's a slight against her when she is a boxer. Um, and I wouldn't have a problem with that because, you know, it's, although it's a male-dominated sport, there is um, there is women's boxing, so it shouldn't be overlooked. Um, and that, incidentally, I... I've not got any sexist inclinations on this. I've seen women fight in the tournament I was in, and uh, you know they absolutely fought like tigers. So I, I take nothing away from them. But if Ring's trying to make some sort of politically correct statement, it's going to backfire. Um, I mean, she's not a boxer. That's the bottom line. Um, that's it, really. So predictions: I think Klitschko will win. I think Canelo will win. And I don't think boxing is going to die. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you.